all, my name is Archana Raman and I'm an occupational therapist um, and uh, today we are going to be uh, talking about the topic of sensory overload and sensory sensitivities. So um, the reason why I'm talking about this topic is uh, several mothers and teachers have come to me asking me for uh, why their children are reacting in certain ways and why they have certain sensitivities. So we are going to be looking at this with a, a cup example. So now we've all learned that there are five sensory systems, which is seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, and smelling. And on top of this, there are two other senses, which is the joint position sense. And one is the movement sense or the vestibular sense, which tells us whether uh, we are moving and how we are reacting to inertia and the gravitational force and so on. Now, um, all these senses have to talk to each other and then talk to the brain for the child or the adult to make sense of what is happening in the environment or what is happening inside their body as well. So let me give you a small example. Uh, let's say you imagine this is a ball and the ball is coming to me. It's being thrown at me. I will have to use my eyes to calibrate the speed at which it's coming. And then I will have to use my joint position sense to know how much force to use to catch the ball. So you won't catch a plastic ball with the same force that you would catch uh, a basketball with. Okay. So then my joints will also have to know where to position my elbow, my wrist. And should I keep it near my body? Should I go in anticipation and catch it? Or should I just lift my hands up and move my body? And then my gravitational sense has to balance, maintain a good sense of balance, counterbalance as well for my body to not fall down and um, also then I have the hearing sense so I'll have to if I'm standing in a stadium and trying to catch the ball I if the crowd is cheering for me I'll have to mute out all that noise in my brain and just focus on this and I'll, if my coach is giving instructions saying look at the ball I'll have to pay attention to that instruction as well so you can see how many senses are interplay uh, playing with each other to make sense of a ball that's coming at me to catch it. The same thing happens with writing, reading, drawing, riding a bike, uh, cooking a meal, um, you know, uh, so many other activities that are everyday activities in which all the senses have to act together to create a meaningful um, output, a meaningful activity in the end and also make sense of what's happening around us and in the body. Now, if you notice with the cup example, um, if we put different senses into this cup in equal measure, so sense of hearing, smell, taste, touch um, and smelling vestibular and auditory sense, for some of us, the cup gets full very easily and for others, no matter how much we put, the cup will only get full up to a certain level, right? So what then happens is for these children whose cups get filled very easily, um, they will go into sensory sensitivities and sensory overload. So sensory sensitivities meaning they could have hearing sensitivity, touch sensitivity, um, visual sensitivities and so on. Now with these children, they're known as hyposensitive children. So these are the children where um, you find that in a classroom scenario, uh, they need to keep on moving they won't sit in a place at home when you give them homework they won't be able to sit for a span of more than 10 minutes or a few minutes they have to get up and move uh, or even at their dinner table they're very restless so they have to take something and do that or they have to move they have to leave the table go for a run and come back um, so these are the restless children we're talking about and these are the children who will have full-blown sensory meltdowns so a sensory meltdown is where the child uh, falls on the ground and cries shuts their ears and screams um, sometimes scratches at you uh, a sensory meltdown down is very different to a temper tantrum or a tantrum and I'll talk about it in another video. Now to give you an example of what a sensory meltdown can look like. So it's 6 a.m. in the morning, uh, my, com my mom comes and wakes me up, jolts me and then she's given me a limited time to get ready for school and then it's 8 a.m. and I'm served a platter of breakfast. So here is some scrambled egg and some toast and some um, idlis, all slimy texture. I don't like that texture. Sensory over. Oh. And then it's 9 a.m. The school bus or van comes and um, it's very noisy in the school bus. I don't like the sounds of it and I don't like my skin brushing against other children. Sensory overload. So here we go. Okay. So that's the school bus time. Okay. Now it's 10 a.m. And the school bell rings and I now have to go and play with other children in recess. So I have a poor sense of balance. Um, I don't want to go and stand near other children. And... The teacher and everyone else doesn't understand this and they push me to go and play in the playground. So here it is. Now as you can see with these two cups, this cup is now filled and overflowing. So it's 12 p.m. and it's dinner time at school. I have to take my lunchbox, 
and eat a cold lunch i don't like cold temperatures um the teacher comes and says finish your meal quickly so that is putting me under pressure and also i have to uh, stand near the children and listen to these noises and i'm aversive to um, loud sounds so you can see here the cup is not full the cup is only full up to here so they can take more and more and more input these are the sensory seekers so these are the children which will seek movement these children will seek um climbing they can spin they can run they, they need more and more and more to calm themselves down and still they wouldn't be calm and these children are the children who go into a sensory overload very easily now i am give, going to give you strategies to manage these children who have a sensory overload in another video that's to come and we also do courses on the same and webinars um, now if you would like to get in touch with us about the same and learn certain parenting and school related strategies you can get in touch with us uh, on our whatsapp number which has been given in the description bar below and i've also uh, given a link to how you can manage children who are restless in another video so good luck guys and if you like this video give us a like and a subscribe and um, let us know how um, you understood this in the comment section below.